what I thought about is that even though building resilience doesn't come with a badge of honor, we don't necessarily have to validate that with other people. You know, it, when you're in survival mode, you do get more pity um, and more sympathy from people. But what are you seeking? Mm. Are you seeking that to feel okay? Yeah. Oh, I know you. I, I I know you're not going through. I know you're going through a tough time right now. You're barely meeting ends meet. Are you okay, sugar? What is that going to do for you? You know mm-hmm. what what type of validation are you seeking compared to somebody that um, is resilient and is able to go through those battles in life? And we're not saying alone, but still able to um, conquer those battles in life. It doesn't come with a badge of honor, and it doesn't come with somebody validating that. You know, either it's it's all about. Self- Hello, welcome back, y'all, to Speaking with Gravity. Yes. I am your host, Joshua Williams. Hello, everyone. My name is Tana Williams. And Terrence Stalkins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so we're back, y'all, with uh, episode 10. This is the final episode of uh, the eighth season. Aww. Aww. <laughs> tear, tear, tear drop, tear drop. Um, so it's sure to be sure to be uh, fun and engaging. Another fun and engaging episode. Right. Um, but we appreciate you, you all for being with us on this journey. Uh, through our eighth season uh, so far it's it's really special for us three i think because this is the first season where we where we're joining together right as the mm-hmm. host of speaking with gravity so mm-hmm. shout out to curvin out there you know for putting this whole thing together shout out to winston out yes. there you know for holding us down uh behind the scenes so we're just really uh really grateful mm-hmm. and thankful today y'all so uh yeah made it through this season y'all oh, how, how yeah. does it feel how does it feel to make it through this eighth season y'all um, together, it's different. It's been it's been a great experience. I think uh, this is my first time ever doing like being a host on a podcast or anything like that. But I definitely can see um, a lot of you know growth from all of us. Mm-hmm. And but I, I like the uh, relationship that we we mm-hmm. started to build and and started each time you know each episode we seemed like we started to come together a little bit more. So I started. Yeah. To, I really like that. Yeah, I I really value how we interact um, just as a unit. We all bring different perspectives to the table, um, and we're able to collaborate and come together and just have an engaging conversation. That's really what speaking comes down to. Speaking with gravity comes down to just having an engaging um, conversation where we're all able to learn. So I'm appreciative Beautiful. for that. Beautiful. Now, did you feel like you survived this season, or did you feel like you 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 grew? Through the season. You thrived. Thrived. Okay. Thrived. Beautiful, beautiful. Because that's what we're going to talk about today, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, The difference in surviving, survival versus uh, resilience. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So you said it, thriving and not just surviving, right? Right. So for me, y'all, we talk about survival versus resilience. To me, it's like going through it versus growing through it, Mm -hmm. right? Survival to me is I'm going through it, I'm going through this thing. And resilience is I'm building strength. Mm-hmm. As I'm going along, how how about for y'all? When when you think about that topic, right? Survival versus resilience. What comes to mind immediately for y'all? When I think about survival versus resilience, I think about one um, just meeting the bare minimum needs in our life, bare which minimum. is survival. Mm. Uh, we do what we have to 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 survive, to eat, um, to pay our bills. It is the bare minimum. When I think about resilience, um, I think about growing outside of that bubble or growing outside of that limitation that we've set for ourselves. And we're able to grow. We're able to thrive. Mm -hmm. Um, And like you said, we're able to learn new coping skills just to grow as an individual. Mm. I I think of survival mode, right? You know, it's just doing things so I can get by Mm -hmm. or doing Mm -hmm. things in order to make sure that I could continue, you know, living ultimately, but not necessarily uh, enjoying it Mm -hmm. or not necessarily growing from it, doing it because I have to. Versus, uh, you know, resilience, which is going through something and then, like you said, learning and growing from it and coming out on the other end with new skills and new behaviors and things like that. Um, I feel like when people when we survive, we gain new, you know, skills, but it might be not be skills that ultimately benefit us. And that makes me think of um, some reframing that I think it was Steve Harvey said one time. Um, 
he went to work every day and he was upset about the work he was doing and he was like, dang, I have to work versus reframing um, and him saying I have to work is meeting those survival needs. Reframing, we may be in the same predicament. Um, nothing in our situation has changed, but we can reframe how we think about our situation so that we can enter that place of um, resilience and thriving. So instead of saying I have to work, he started saying I get to work. I get a chance to provide for my family. I get a chance to wake up and interact with people outside of my household. So just that reframing process, even if we're in the same predicament in life and nothing else has changed, we don't have to be in that survival mode mentality. Mm. So mm-hmm. it's a mindset. It's a mind thing. It's all it's 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 most most of reframing from survival mode and entering um thriving a thriving mode is all about reframing and changing your mentality on things. There there are also physical aspects to that mm-hmm. as well, you know, but a lot of it is mental. So 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 what are the different ways that I guess people um uh, those two different people approach their challenges, right, or approach life of a, a, a survival focused person versus a resilient mm-hmm. person. What are some ways that they approach life or approach their challenges differently? I think say? a person that's surviving can still build resiliency. So I don't think it's like one or the other. You might just okay. be at a different stage, mm-hmm. right? So you could be a person that was surviving, 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 and next thing you know, you've made some type of change, so now you're enjoying life, and you've come out and gained these new skills. Now you've been resilient, right? Now you have resiliency. So I think it's like, uh, probably like different stages instead of two distinct things. Can people stay stuck in survival mode, though? They can, and that is detrimental, I can tell you, uh, because staying is stuck in survival mode, then that can cause problems for medical issues, right? Mm-hmm. Not just psychological issues, but, you know, when I say medical issues, so uh, health problems such as, you know, high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, uh, you know, lung disease or lung issues or um, stomach issues as well. Um, so it really, staying in survival mode, literally in survival mode, because your body responds that way, can cause health problems, not just psychological problems. What, what, um, can I ask you this? What might have somebody stuck in survival mode or, mm-hmm. or motivate somebody to stay in survival mode and never get to that, um, yeah. get to that mode of resilience? Yeah. So, one thing I can think of is that they're just comfortable with where they are in life, mm-hmm. they're complacent, they have no need or no motivation, mm-hmm. um, to grow. Um, I talked to one person a couple years back and, you know, we were talking about him seeking therapy and he was like, you know, I'm good where I'm at. I'm like, I bet you were like, well, are you? Because you just had an outburst. Um, you just started an <laughs> argument with three different people within the same day. Are you good where you at? I'm great. <laughs> They're not able to enter they're not able to change. They're not willing to change. So um, you you can't be complacent in just meeting your bare minimum needs. Um, but also, a person has to have a mentality to want to change and to want um, to just explore what else out there um, is available. How can I grow as a person? And like I said, some people just get complacent. Mm-hmm. You can always be growing. There's always room for growth and improvement, mm-hmm. right? I, I I honestly feel like that. So I'm always looking for... Um, I'm always looking for mm. ways to grow. Or maybe I'm not always looking for it. Maybe they just come to me, right? Or maybe I see challenges as a way to grow. Yeah. I don't know what it is. But either way, I always see ways that I can grow. And yeah. that's good. I think something else that um, another another factor that determines whether a person is in survival mode or if they're thriving is um, their ability to adapt. Mm -hmm. So as we mentioned, always change is constant Constant. and our ability to adapt to a situation can determine how well we're able to um, survive. So if a person in survival mode, they may think that, okay, this this situation right now will literally make or break me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be broken. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to stay complacent. Um, compared to a person that may have already entered um, or is healthier and is in a state of resilience, they're able to understand this situation may break me, but I'm able to rise up. Mm -hmm. It may make me into a better person. Am I willing to take that risk? Um, And most people that um, have a level of resilience, they're able to make decisions and take risks because they're more equipped with the tools, um, the tools and the support in case they break or fall down. Definitely. 
think you, no, you go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I think you got to get yourself ready. Uh, so, cause I I was gonna ask the question, um, how do we work on adapting? But I th- I think it's um, I think you just got to get yourself in the mindset that what you have right now might not be able to solve all the challenges, all the problems that come up. Right? Mm-hmm. It may be some additional things, right, that you have to learn. Right? Some flexibility involved on your end. Right? For you to solve the problems of tomorrow, mm-hmm. sure, the problems of today or yesterday, they might have what you had might have been sufficient for them. But for what's coming, you don't know what's coming, right? Mm-hmm. And so, being in the mind frame, being in the mindset, right, where uh, just knowing that I may need something else, I, I may need some more fortitude, some more strength, mm-hmm. you know, I may need a little more growth on my end, right? Um, yeah, you go ahead. Being that person to make that change can be difficult because when we're thinking about survival mode, we're not only just thinking about survival mode for yourself. Sometimes you're in survival mode and your entire family is depending on you to make a decision. Um, And that that comes with a lot of pressure. That comes with a lot of stress. Um, So being in survival mode is just not an identity of just yourself. Your decisions can impact um, more than one person so I think that brings some type of element of okay am I ready for change what what risk or what reward will this change um you know get me what am I able to earn from learning how to be more resilient I don't know if folks out there can hear that heater but that heater down and surviving ain't it (laughs) (laughs) surviving thriving look that that much going on and all I'm thriving with this heat though (laughs) Listen, Thanks. listen, but but yeah. Um, and then yeah. something else I want to mention is that, um, and this is just me speaking personally, when I was in survival mode, I had to make a lot of decisions that I didn't necessarily want to make. Mm. Um, I was just operating in survival mode, and a lot of those decisions had some consequences. Um, and just with me speaking to my therapist, she said that we have to forgive ourselves for what we did in survival mode. So mm. as we grow and as we become this resilient person, we can't judge um, the person we used to be. And more importantly, we can't judge someone that is still in a state of survival mm. mode. We're supposed to be there as role models to show, hey, once you build this level of resilience, yeah, I still struggle with challenges. I still have traumatic experiences. I still have family issues, but I'm more equipped to deal with those issues mm. um, so that you, I don't wear my emotions on my sleeve. You can't. Yeah see everything I've gone through or everything I'm dealing with, but I do have to forgive myself for the decisions I made while I was in survival mode because they those decisions might still impact me to this day. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of times they do. And let me reach back and build somebody else up. All right. If Pay I can, it for it. If I can do it, yeah. And another thing about um, talking about survival mode versus resilience is that, and this is just me speaking sp- personally, something I had to do was re-enter my feminine energy. Um, And this is something I researched and um, I looked into is that when I was in survival mode as a woman, I was operating in a masculine mentality just Mm -hmm. to survive. Um, And I'll even, for those that don't know, the difference between masculine energy and feminine energy. Feminine energy is more nurturing, more open to receive, um, more flowing and uh, yeah, more flowing. So even being open to receive, being receptive. I wasn't vulnerable during um, a certain stage in my life when I was in survival mode. I wasn't open to help. I wasn't open to people, here's $20 to go eat. Oh, no, I'm good. I wasn't open. I wasn't receptive. Um, So I had to get out of that masculine mentality that, hey, I got it by myself. I can do everything by myself. And I had to re-enter that feminine energy. For um, Men are for people that represent as um, masculine presenting. Masculine energy is more rational, more protective, more structured, more linear. So if you, um, as a man, you find yourself thinking, um, oh, somebody's just going to bring it to me. You know, the opportunities are there, but I'm not going to go look for it. You're not operating in your masculine energy. So in order to get out of survival mode, my tip is just, Operate in the energy that you were born with, you know. Operate in your feminine energy. Tap back into that feminine energy. As a man, tap back into that masculine energy and see how much you just thrive naturally. Mm. 
I like that, huh? Can the others, can like, uh, say if I'm a man, can feminine energy be, some of it, I guess, be good for that's, me too? That's a, that's a good um, perspective and a good question. And the answer to that is that we have to have energies of both masculine and femi- okay. feminine energy. So a man has to be nurturing to an extent. Mm-hmm. They have to know how to nurture. They, know how to, have to, they have to know how to be vulnerable to an extent. But in general, um, you still have to operate logically. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you, uh, we, have, we have characteristics of masculine energies and feminine energy. But like I said, in my experience, I was operating too much in a masculine mentality. Mm-hmm. Um, and it showed. Mm-hmm. To me, uh, I was thinking about survival versus resilience. Um, y'all know I write stuff down sometimes. Terrence. Mm-hmm. I know. Oh, Terrence, there you I go. I love it. Um, when you are a survivor, I feel like everyone pities you. But when you are resilient, people may not even know that you've gone through anything. Ooh, you wrote that too? I wrote that, man. See, I'm telling you, you be dropping the I be, I be, I, so, so Say I that one I, more time. I'm going to have to write it because I'll forget this stuff yeah. too, right? But I said, when you are a survivor, everyone pities you. Maybe not everyone, but mm-hmm. you know, that, that sometimes that's the type of... Yeah, response. Yeah. When you're a survivor, everyone pities you. When you are resilient, people may not even know that you've gone through anything. Mm-hmm. Right, because you have this strength, this fortitude built up. Mm-hmm. Anybody can survive, but not everyone can come out more powerful. Mm-hmm. Not everyone can come out more powerful. So it's about what you are gaining through y'all, through mm-hmm. your experiences, y'all. I think it's so important. You know, we we build patience a lot of times through our experiences. Mm-hmm. We build, uh, we build fortitude. We, uh, you know, we we uh, we learn things right that we can put into our relationships with others, right? right? So that we can understand other people, right? Um, yeah, I just want to feed back so off of that song. Take from it. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Please. So I like that quote that you said, um, and I like the fact that you wrote it down and expressed that to us. And what I got out of that is that becoming re- resilient doesn't come with a badge of honor. It doesn't come with a trophy. Um, oh, and it is. and. Like you said, it more so comes with being able to have the tools to navigate through life um, in a healthy way. And what I thought about is that even though building resilience doesn't come with a badge of honor, we don't necessarily have to validate that with other people. You know, when you're in survival mode, you do get more pity um, and more sympathy from people. But what are you seeking? Mm. Are you seeking that to feel okay? Yeah. Oh, I know you. I, I I know you're not going through. I know you're going through a tough time right now. You're barely meeting ends meet. Are you okay, sugar? What is that going to do for you? You know mm-hmm. what what type of validation are you seeking compared to somebody that um, is resilient and is able to go through those battles in life? And we're not saying alone, but still able to um, conquer those battles in life. It doesn't come with a badge of honor, and it doesn't come with somebody validating that. You know, either it's it's all about self empowerment. That's it. And that's I always it. said that's that's the only people we need. Like you're not. I mean, of course, we need other people in our lives, but in order to heal, we got to start looking internally instead of mm-hmm. externally. So you need yourself in order to heal, and other people are not going to be able to heal you. Heal you. So yes, yeah, so when you looking to be resilient, is that like okay? I'm going to be resilient. I'm going to work towards this. I'm going to come out on the other side. I'm not just going to sit here and continue to struggle and just be in survival mode mm-hmm. so it's like you need yourself in order to do these things and you have to take that action to get there do you all have any um stories whether personal or like working with other people of stories of survival or being resilient not to get too specific but um in situation i was in uh where i felt like i was surviving i went from surviving to i guess thriving or being resilient um when i felt like i was surviving I would feel good about my response to my trial mm. over time. And then when it got hard again, I would get discouraged. Roller coaster. Right. I was just surviving. But when I became resilient, I had built up some encouragement, built up some strength. I discovered things spiritually and mentally and emotionally about myself that were more than just tips and strategies to get through. A lot of times when we're surviving or when I was surviving, I was just looking for a way through. Mm-hmm. Just looking for a, a tip, anything, a quote of the day, right? But being becoming more resilient, I had built something internally, wasn't looking for anything externally. 
I had built some things up internally, thank the Lord, mm-hmm. that kept me, right? And so I wasn't looking for external things. I was um, knowing, right, being confident that what I had built up, that I would that I would be able to um, to go through it and to grow through it. I was more confident in that. And so I wasn't looking for looking for things all the okay. time. Um, and those internal things that I built up, it's kind of like a foundation, right? A uh, foundation uh, building onto your character. So they were character traits that I built up, not little tips and things that I was getting from ev- everywhere, but actually building myself up, bu- building the house, not just putting new furniture in it right. and hoping that it... Hoping that uh, it look good. Hoping that, about <laughs> it looking good, but actually building a house up, a house on a on a much better foundation. Mm-hmm. So um, maybe not really speaking specifically, but um, but yeah, that's my yeah. my Thank experience you. though. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for that feedback, and mm-hmm. I just wanted to highlight how you said that you added the element of spirituality and um, tapping into a higher power. What I've seen with my own personal experience as well as um, the experiences around me is that when it comes to our mental health and coming out of survival mode and entering a state of resilience is that we need something else to help us do that. Yeah, yeah, it comes from um, our inter- internal um, sources, but we also need support from others. And one big... Um, Level one big support can be your religion or it can be your spirituality. Looking forward to something higher than you, looking mm-hmm. so, looking forward or depending on something that you can't physically see. Um, I think that can build in my in my personal experience that has built a level of resilience. Just being able to depend on something that um, is not physical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think you can like in order to survive. I don't think you can. I mean, in order to build resiliency, uh, I think you have to surround yourself with people you, it's harder to do it on your own and when you're on your own that's when you can probably get stuck in that survival mode but when you surround yourself with a good support Come system on, man. Yeah. then that's mm-hmm. when you start to build they encourage you and that's when you start to become resilient because they are pushing you yeah. and sometimes it's hard to push yourself when you're mm-hmm. being in living in survival mode almost all your life mm-hmm. that's all you know but when somebody comes by and show you something different Listen. now I know different Yes, sir. so let me move towards that that's what it's about. Yeah. You mentioned something important, living in survival mode your entire life. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I want to go back to the point I made before is that we can be very comfortable in survival mode simply yeah. because that's sometimes all a person has ever known mm-hmm. is survival mode. So I don't want to offend people by saying like, you know, it's easy to tap outside of survi- survival mode because it's not easy at all. Mm-hmm. You have to do it with intention and purpose. Um, and like you said, reaching out to your community, but it's not easy at all. Mm. It's meaningful. And on the other side where they say the grass is greener on the other side, it is greener outside of survival mode but the process of getting there is difficult Mm -hmm. man get with some people who done done it because it is gonna be difficult it is it's gonna be difficult getting out if you've been in that your whole life that's how you get through things you don't know no other way it's gonna be scary it's gonna be scary it's gonna be a void there get with you some good people like like terrence is saying some people um who who've been through it you know who's who's made that change who look at life Mm -hmm. you know uh from a different aspect, from an aspect of growth and growing in your yeah. challenges, right? Um, so I have a question before please. we go to the next um, phase of the conversation. Do you all think it is possible for a person to be too resilient? I don't know. I think, question. so when you say too resilient, it just makes me think maybe it'll dip over into something else like um, arrogance or like something else. Mm-hmm. Um, um, depending so much on themselves, I... I picked myself up from um, being in poverty. Um, I'm the black sheep of my family, and I'm the breadwinner. Um, do you feel like there's there can be a person can be too resilient um, that comes with that level of arrogance? Mm-hmm. Oh man, I, I feel like you. I feel like you never want to take all the glory for anything that goes on in your life, maybe good or bad, but mm-hmm. definitely good. Never want to take all the glory. I think you. Um, I think it's so much that happens in between, you know, you becoming who you are, you becoming that person. Some things happen outside of your control. Mm-hmm. You might think it's all you. But it's a lot of things that happen that's outside of your control. Um, so you, you want to be very careful about that. Not, you know, 
not doing it, not taking all the glory because mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. whatever's happening outside your control, you want to continue to get those blessings. Yeah. So you don't want to try to acknowledge that you, that it's all on you. You got to be very careful with that. So you got to check yourself then. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I, to piggyback off that, I feel like going back to the community and support system, I feel like a lot of people will say, oh, yeah, I did it on my own. But if you really truly looked at it, you probably did <laughs> Somebody mm-hmm. helped. Somebody. Like, okay, uh, I got this job on my own. You had to have somebody hire you, didn't you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you didn't get it on your own. You had a boss, so you, you took had an interview, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. And I uh, yes, you did well in the interview, and they said, hey, I want you here at this job. But guess what? That person that gave you the job, they helped you by mm-hmm. giving you the job. So I feel like doing that inside work, letting, them, letting people uh, trying to understand that, yes, I've done a lot of work by myself, but there was someone there that helped me along the way to get where I'm at. Correct. So you probably didn't do it alone. And that's not to take away anything from anybody and what they accomplished in life. But there was still someone there that helped you get there. Mm-hmm. And just a little background about why I asked that is that when we talk about the stereotype of the strong black woman, what comes with that is often the trait of being super strong, mm-hmm. super resilient. So mm. is that a bad thing? And and that was my context. Is 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 mm. it is, is it a bad thing or can someone be too resilient in the sense that nothing affects them? Oh man, I think I just think you got to be careful. You but I but I I I love it. Um cuz I cuz I see that a lot and and a lot of those women I feel like they they warrant that respect. That's they should get mm. that respect, right? Cuz they have um because they exhibited that strength, you know, they was mm-hmm. willing to exhibit that strength, uh, which is so important. That's part of it. But then another part of it, I feel like you got to acknowledge other parts of it. other right. parts of it is you blessed too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, some some kind of some kind of favor, some kind of fortune has worked in worked for you, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, before you just you know take all that glory, just continue to do what you've been doing. Right. Just continue, you know you. You don't have to take it all now. Now, sometimes, you know, to build your confidence up, you may have to encourage yourself like, yes, I did. Mm-hmm. You know, yes, yes. Uh, but also acknowledge those things outside of you, I feel mm-hmm. like, that that have uh, that, that have helped to lead you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe that someone can be too resilient, but I feel like um, if we enter a phase where, you know, we are resilient in life, we're able to share that with others. We're able to be role models mm-hmm. and say, hey, I see I see your, you know, life is really life in right now for you. Yeah. Let me offer you some of my resilience. Let me share with you how I went through this situation or what do you need in your situation and how can I, as a person that has gone through a similar situation, how can I help you? So, like I said, when we get through that to that level of being resilient in life, we have to pay it forward and help others mm-hmm. around us get out of survival mode. Yep. I love it. I love it. What you thinking over that, Tim? The survival mode is just really getting to me. I'm going to tell you why. Tell me why, please. It's because when I think about all the people that have lived in survival mode most of their lives, and that's all that they know. Mm -hmm. And then I think about the health issues that go on in the black community as well. And then I think about how people don't understand or don't know how to do better because they were never taught how to do better. Mm. And that's why I really enjoy doing this podcast because like each topic, we're giving people little nuggets on how mm. to get to resiliency, right? Mm. But whether that's through relationships, whether it's through understanding, you know, the Trump transcending trauma, right? Whether that's understanding the difference between surviving and resiliency. I think, you know, that's why I really enjoy doing this and being a part of this team because we're, in a way, making a difference through some of the conversations mm-hmm. we're having, you know, with ourselves, but then other people are looking at it, and maybe they'll comment, maybe they won't, but we're changing so many lives, and I just really enjoyed that opportunity, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like some great stuff have been, has yeah. been said, y'all. Any any thoughts that that y'all just had, any lingering thoughts? Or anything? Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a great topic, you know. I think, I, and I feel like we can go on and on. Uh, for the people out there watching, um, you know, I think just be mindful, right, that there's uh, there's room for growth, you know, continue mm-hmm. to examine yourself, right? You could be in survival mode and not even know it. And, and you could mm-hmm. you could you could have built up resilience, right? In in one thing, um in one thing, right? But then mm-hmm. in other ways, you know, you're just making it through. Right. right? Mm-hmm. Um and so could continue to look at I guess maybe different parts of your life, mm-hmm. right? 
Yeah, just the feedback off of that. I like what you said. And the strength that we have um, that we have obtained during one part in our, our life mm-hmm. can transfer or can help us improve in another part of our life. So, for example, if in my career and in my profession, um, I have this great position and I have this great job, great salary. However, in my home life, I'm not, you know, things are looking a little shady. How can I empower myself through the work that I'm doing in one area of my life? How can I use those similar traits and say, okay, these are traits that I'm using in my work in my workplace. How can I apply them to my family? Or these are traits that I'm using in my workplace and I'm successful here. How do I need to change those traits to be more successful um, and to accommodate to the family setting? So I like how you said that just because you're resilient in one area of your life, um, it can it doesn't always transfer to areas, other areas of your life, but it can. Yeah, and a lot of those people might need to see your resilience too. Mm-hmm. You might be really resilient in your career and at work and then at home, you know, you're just making it through. Right. Yep. You know, and a lot of those people at home, they might need to see that, y'all. They might need to mm-hmm. see it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, you got any last thoughts? No, nah, I think I said mine a minute ago. That that was what's really was sitting on my mind. That, uh, yeah. Like how how impactful a simple, like I said before, a conversation can have on so many different lives. And, mm-hmm. and I think people avoid these conversations for different reasons. That could be because of the pain, that could mm-hmm. be because they don't know how to express themselves and that can keep them stuck in the, you know, where they're at. But showing people, you know, with, with us up here that they can't communicate or that they, or they don't know how to communicate. Hopefully they take something from you know what we said to try mm-hmm. to learn how to communicate and that can change so many lives. So beautiful. And I feel like social media can sometimes make it so challenging to mm. acknowledge that you're in survival mode. Mm-hmm. If you're constantly trying to compare yourself um, to, you know, what someone else has or the lifestyle of somebody else, um, it mm-hmm. can make it difficult to acknowledge what you have, in front of you and how you can grow as a person. So just that mm. the element of social media, it makes it hard to um, really understand survival mode versus a person that has resilience. Beautiful. Detached from social media sometimes. Sometimes that's needed, y'all. Mm-hmm. Or it's from mm-hmm. certain things on social media. I, the stuff I used to follow, I ain't about to tell y'all all that stuff I used to follow. <laughs> but stuff I used to follow. <laughs> stuff I used to follow, I don't follow no more. Mm-hmm. I don't need that in, I don't need to be seeing that every, right. uh, all the time. That was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. I ain't fooling you. Um, I don't need to see that all the time, right? So don't be afraid to detach from it, you know, for your growth. For yeah. your growth. All right. We appreciate y'all. Uh, Season uh season eight is uh is in the books, y'all. Uh, I think it's a great book to mm-hmm. read, right? Yep. So y'all go check out these episodes that, that have led us up to this point, right? Yes. Through season eight, uh, it's been a beautiful beautiful season for myself. I'm sure it has for my for my uh, co host here. Um, and just know, you know, we're gonna be taking a few weeks off mm-hmm. uh, through the summer, rest and recuperate, so we can be ready for you in season nine. That's right. Yes. Season nine, yeah. Self-care, so, y'all. Self-care. I'll take care of <laughs> yourself, yes. Um, so, yeah, as we wrap up today's episode in this season, just remember uh, that choosing, uh, not surviving. choosing the right people, but surviving, surviving, mm-hmm. which which goes into it, I guess, some kind of way. <laughs> some um, kind of way. Right. Uh, resilience is, is, is so important. Um, not yeah. just surviving, but, uh, but, but growing through it, right? Mm-hmm. I remember that. And, um, yeah, we, we've enjoyed this season with you again. Uh, I'm Joshua. Uh, you can find me at at Joshua underscore be impactful. What yes, and I just want to add that um, resilience has no age. So a child can be resilient, an adult can be resilient, and even an elderly person can build some type of level of resilience. Um, but you all can find me at on Instagram at Hannah Elise two underscores. Beautiful. And you can find me at Terrence underscore Dawkins. All right. Y'all take care. All right. Subscribe to Speaking with Gravity on YouTube and everywhere else. Uh, We'll see y'all next season. All right.